So you were here on the night though? Yes, that's correct. Could you tell me what you saw? So um, I live directly opposite uh, the block and at about 1.30 a.m. I became aware that there was a lot of people on the street and then I looked up to the right and I saw the building on fire. Um, at that stage I came down and stayed on the street till about uh, 9 a.m. During that period, uh, essentially we were watching people we loved uh, burn to death and die. At one point we were around here on the corner and we could hear people screaming to us to help them. We went over uh, by the station and we could see up on what appears to have been the 21st floor. Uh, a family waving, waving a white towel out of the window for what was about an hour and a half. Um, the helicopter, which appears to have been a news helicopter, came close to them and then turned around, came about 200, 300 meters away from them and then turned around. And we were really just standing there watching them, watching them die. And uh, it was obviously very, very harrowing and uh, I think traumatic for a lot of people that were, um, that were present. Um, I have a friend, uh, a good friend of mine, Yasin al Wahabi, who, you know, there's different reports, but it seems that maybe he didn't make it out. Um, I have another friend that I just saw now that lived on the 15th, 15th floor and he did manage to get out alive. Um, he got out about four o'clock and he's just got out of hospital now and he's been uh, seriously affected by the experience and seriously traumatised by the experience. In terms of where we place the responsibility and the accountability for this uh, tragic incident, we need to look firstly at Grenfell Action Group continuously, not once, not twice, not three times, but continuously during the TMO and the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea's attention towards the fact that the uh, building was not prepared for any type of incident like this. And they said pretty much word for word that it will take a massive loss of life for the ineptitude and incompetence that was uh, constructing of this building and the maintenance of this building to be revealed essentially and so um, they were warned and they knew that this building was not safe. The refurbishment which depending to some sources it cost eight million pounds, other sources about 9.7 million pounds which again is outsourced and I think this is an important part of this because important part of the sort of neoliberal consensus which came across the political class in this country from the 80s was the idea that outsourcing was for the best. It's the idea that corporate power is number one more um, adept at handling issues and that corporate power is more important than state power. It's the, the self-hating weak state that essentially uh, the ideology of neoliberalism imbues within a political class and they took that on. So um, they added cladding to the outside which clearly is flammable also and so exacerbated the issue of a fire which would have been easily contained were in Chalik Tower as had happened. It was contained and kept to one flat. Here it spread very quickly. So we saw that spread, you know, and we heard people crying for help and I didn't see anyone jump, but obviously we heard people jump. You know, we were breathing it in, bits of the building were falling down on us, bits of people's homes were falling down on us. It reminds me of a poem by Mahmoud Darwish called The House is a Casualty, where it talks about every single element of the house as having been touched by a human presence, whether it's a half-finished bottle of milk or a bill or a notepad, it's touched by a human presence. And even to see that all around us, see people's homework, to see pages of books burnt and around us, obviously it's very, um, it's very, very harrowing thing to see. And, um, you know, as I say, people uh, I love seem to have died in that building. Um, and there has to be accountability for this. There has, people have to go to prison for this. There has to be reparations for this. But moreover, we need to make sure that the people that um, lived in that building have the right to be rehoused in a building in the same place if they want. They have the right to be in the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. What we've seen happen is, um, according to reports, they're only rehousing uh, the elderly and the vulnerable. And that's completely wrong. They have a serious responsibility to uh, rehouse the people that have been displaced uh, by this terrible, terrible uh, situation. So really, I think this not only is a condemnation of the uh, 
contractors responsible for this building, but moreover, it's a condemnation of austerity, it's a condemnation of neoliberalism and of the cuts to emergency services, because were they better equipped, potentially people will have lived that didn't have to die in the first place. They built their uh, Kensington Academy, which also impeded the ability of emergency services to get towards the building. You know, were this Kensington Town Hall, this would not have happened. This would not have happened. It would not be the empty carcass that the building now is. And uh, so, you know, I just want to send my biggest condolences to everybody that lost anyone and anyone that's looking for anyone at this time. And if anyone needs anywhere to stay, or if anyone needs anything, they are completely have the right to contact me and I will do whatever I can to help you, whether it's helping you be housed or whether it's helping you meet uh, material needs at this time. Obviously the uh, outpouring has, has been references in the news of people coming in and presenting food and pre prevent, presenting water and presenting um, clothes and stuff and bedding is fantastic but we need to turn it into political mobilisation. We need to turn it into a movement which pushes for two things. Number one, accountability um, and justice but also number two, uh, it needs to kick back against the aims of regeneration of uh, this estate which has been going on for about a year and a half two years they have been building towards it we as a community have been organizing against it but what i also fear with this is it can be weaponized in that they can look at the other blocks around here the other four very large tower blocks and say to them you don't want to happen to you what happened in grenfell so therefore you should allow us to knock down these blocks now people that live in this area have um, school nearby for their children have jobs nearby we need to maintain the sense of community here because when you take away the physical possibility of community you take away the emotional psychological possibility of community and this is an area with a very rich tradition of diasporic brilliance this is the area where bob marley recorded exodus this is the area of the mangrove nine darkest how this is the area where kelso Cochrane was killed that led to the carnival this this is the area of frestonia this is an area of so many interesting beautiful subversive movements we can't allow gentrification to um, to eat at it and uh, to essentially aim at homogenizing the population here we have to resist social cleansing and we have to do everything that we can to make sure that this mobilization and galvanization of people which of course is positive but what I would say is on the night when it was happening and we were out in the street it was only people from the community here not many of those people are still here. The people that now are here, which we're blessed by their presence, obviously, they're not people that live here. They're not people that live here. Part of it has turned into the big spectacle of you know this carcass of a building where death happened, you know, and the corpses are still there. You know, my friend who came out from the 15th floor and, and, and survived miraculously, he was tripping over corpses coming out. There's been a cover-up in the amount of people that have died in this building. And, you know, my point is, is that we have to use these numbers and we have to really aim at political organisation and mobilisation. We have to meet, we have to talk, we have to find ways for us to legally move towards justice and compensation for all the people that have suffered here. Thank you very much.